don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. They're now trying to say, hey, we've got a really clever idea for the cost of living crisis. Right. Eat cereal for dinner. But for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail to, her. Yeah, we're supposed it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. And I'm Alex Phillips. We're with you for the next half hour to wade through the rope to garner some gasps and guffaws. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. You just thought of that, didn't you? you I didn't did. I literally that. didn't have a... But thought in my brain today. I'm sort of slightly dopey. I don't know what's oh, going on with me. Well, you are slightly dopey. Oh, thanks. But, uh, not thanks, necessarily love. today. Uh, <laughs> but I thought I was good at alliteration, but uh, you are excellent. That's because I'm Alliteration Alex. Uh, alliteration Alex. Not much of a nickname, but uh, <laughs> it'll do. Right, let's uh, get going. We've got 30 thrilling minutes ahead. We're going to throttle through the headlines. Some very big stories around oh, today. Oh, it's tasty news day, isn't and it? And he here's one for all the Remainers. Uh, this, is, hey! this one is for you. Brit Brexit Britain has become the world fourth mm -hmm. biggest exporter. We have overtaken France and Woo! Netherlands. They're both Woo! in the EU, I should point out, and Japan. Uh, this is a blow to Remain, as you said, leaving the right. EU would be a disaster. It isn't. Uh, we are only uh, beaten by China. That is the first, oh, you know. the world's biggest exporter. That's not surprising. Also America, not Massive. surprising. Uh, and uh, Germany, which, of course, is Massive. the leading exporter of common sense when it comes to its climate change policies. Uh, but it is still a big exporter. So we're fourth. We're fourth. And we've and, gone up since leaving oh, the EU. So there you go. These are the latest statistics we've had, which is from 2022. So who knows? It might be even better by then. Um, and do you know what's interesting about this is the vast majority of our exports are in the service industry, particularly financial services. Now, what has happened since we left the EU? We don't have a services deal with the EU to trade services uh, freely with them yeah. because they know that that's what we deem good at. So, no, we're not going to give you a deal in services. So, actually, this has nothing to do with EU membership or not EU membership. This is because since leaving the EU, we've been able to liberate the financial services sector, strike massive deals in financial services abroad in countries that aren't in the EU, where we couldn't have trade deals before, remember, because the EU said, no, 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 can't make your own trade deals. And we've been able to cut red tape significantly in those Edinburgh yeah. reforms. One good thing that Jeremy Hunt did, by the way, uh, in financial services. And now we're looking to strike up big service sector deals with Turkey. And honestly, it's just Brexit is finally starting to deliver. So your boo sucks, your naysayers of Britain. Look at the facts, my friends. We were right. <laughs> I knew you were the one to talk about that. Uh, Business Secretary Kemi baden Oksha said uh, these new figures show the UK is punching above its weight on trade Massively. and is on track to reach our ambition Massively. of exporting a trillion pounds worth of goods and services uh, a year by the year 2030. I mean, imagine if we used all of our other Brexit liberties and created some more dividends like slashing corporation tax and VAT off energy bills and all these other things that we could do as a country to be even more attractive for business. And and get manufacturing up and going. We could be huge. <laughs> 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 What she said. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Prince Harry, now... Uh, That's one export that we don't want coming back. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, he could well be an import soon oh, into God. Britain because uh, the case uh, brought by the Heritage Foundation, which is a Washington think tank, uh, actually uh, devoted to the memory of Margaret Thatcher, actually. Mm. Uh, a lot of British people work there. Anyway, they have... Uh, Demanded to know what is on uh, Harry's US visa application, his, uh, the form he filled in in order to reside there. And, of course, this revolves around the fact that in his book Spare, he admitted to quite heavy drug use, a big fan of uh, cannabis, cocaine and magic mushrooms. Uh, now, uh, what the Heritage Foundation have been saying is, well, did you put that on your right. application form, your visa form? Because if you didn't, that's a lie, mm -hmm. and that is a very serious offence. And if you did... And, uh, <laughs> and uh, if you didn't put it on your form, uh, 
then you're lying. <laughs> if you did put it on your form, why were you allowed to stay? Right. Because if it was you or me, Alex, or all of you out there, if it was Joe Soap, uh, and you went, hey, I'm a big fan of Coke and dope and uh, love a bit of magic mushrooms. You can't live in... Uh, not only will you not be able to live in America, they won't even let you go there. So uh, what's happened now in this long-running saga? Uh, Joe Biden, a deferential forelock-touching pardon be me ever so humble Democrat boy, uh, him and his uh, home security department have been desperately trying to protect the prince, so you can't see his form. Anyway, the Heritage Foundation taken them to court and uh, it has now been ordained uh, that the uh, DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, must hand mm -hmm. the judge... Uh, Harry's form, and they're going to do this now. Uh, he's going to pour over it and decide whether or not the American people should have the right to see this and or whether or not Harry has the right to stay. Let me tell you, uh, he's in a bit of trouble here. Well, yeah, thank you, Heritage Foundation. If he has to come back, we're not really going to <laughs> like that. I thought you were our friends over there. Um, but, um, no, it's true. It, it is. It, I mean... I... It's a difficult one, but he cannot be treated like uh, exceptionally, can he? Not cannot in be America. Treated, Not in yeah, America. He cannot be treated um, differently to any other person who applies to go there. All I could think about was after my alliteration, all of your assonance when you said Joe Soap likes coke and dope. There you go. Can he stay in America? The people say I'm, nope. I'm a natural. I'm a I was natural. just I was thinking it was but quite see, poetic see, in your own way. Yeah, serious. I'm a poet and I don't know it. <laughs> uh, but seriously, uh, this is getting serious. Uh, uh, now, uh, yeah. don't forget, Donald Trump, uh, if he wins the presidential election in November, has said he will not help Harry stay in America. So uh, <laughs> oh, if Donald, Donald wins the election, Election, Please, Harry could be stay. on the first plane on the first oh, easy God. jet back to uh, oh, London. Man. So that'll be fun. Uh, meanwhile, uh, back in Britain, this is a, uh, an extraordinary story. Front page of the is it, is it, Times today. Is it well, uh, I mean, it's not unexpected, but sickness benefit claims have rocketed yeah. by a third uh, in Tory heartlands. They've rocketed all over it's the country. Absolutely. But where mad. the Tories are, are strong, uh, more and more people are swinging the leg, taking think, time that, off. Do you know what? The cost of this, 2 million people are receiving universal credit health benefits. That's up by 400,000 in a year, um, with most deemed unfit for work. If the cost of this is currently 66 billion last year, and it's supposed to reach 91 billion pounds by the end of the decade. What I don't get about this is, you know, back in the day, oh, I've got a bad back, I can't get to the office. Well, everyone works from home now. How does that fly anymore? Um, exactly. Apparently, everyone's just going bonkers, aren't they? And going balmy, and I'm so sad, therefore I can't go to work. And good old Mel Slide, of course, and Department of Work and Pension said, you know what? Bit of labour's good for the soul. Get back to the office and it might cheer you up. That's like my mum used to say that, but with a, uh, you know, if I'm really unwhelmed, I might not want to go to school. I, 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 she might go to school, see how you feel by break time. And you'd always be magically better, wouldn't you? I always like going to the office like a social occasion. I, 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 do, but I, I slip some right. work in, but mostly I just have fun. Uh, right. But seriously, uh, the thing about We've all these get on top of this claims is how many of these people are telling the truth? Uh, yeah. Obviously, uh, a fair proportion. But I'll tell you, uh, a lot of them are lying. Mm -hmm. They're swinging the lead uh, and they're playing the system. So they're many people could benefits. be working. They're getting written off for the rest of their careers. Oh, I you mean, don't ever have to go to work. Oh, what? Oh, mental health. I'm mental depressed. Health. Come on. Or, you know, I once on. twisted my arm and now I can't, you know, lift things anymore. It's just this get back to work. To We've stop. got to deal with our welfare system. I mean, was it not ridiculous enough when we saw that 54, billion pound, 54 million pound fall by that Bulgarian? Yeah, yeah, gang yesterday. Yeah, yeah, we, Apparently, the um, IMF have come up with a good policy for the first time in their lives, and they've said that Western countries need to cut taxes and welfare to get people working again. I've never heard the IMF say anything commonsensical. Uh, well, that's not a bad idea. I know. Uh, meanwhile, let's go back to uh, Dr. Hilary Cass's. Uh, bombshell report Very on important. trans kids, uh, kids with gender dysphoria. Uh, she says that one aspect of it we didn't cover yesterday, and it's really, really worrying, mm -mm -mm. is that kids were being coached by adults mm -hmm. on what to say yep. to NHS doctors in order to be yep. prescribed puberty blockers, uh, which uh, are irreversible so and life-changing. A lot of this material is often found online, isn't it? You've got all those weirdo, sort of slightly groomery influencers saying to kids on things like TikTok, if you want your parents and your teachers and everyone to help you convert, this is how you do it. You say that you feel suicidal, you say that you're self-harming. Then you get to have a new willy and life will be better. No, stop 
stop it. It's weird. Yeah, stop yeah. grooming the children. <laughs> but um, no, but the thing is, when doctors are sitting there, you know how a lot of these things work. There's a kind of drop down checklist, isn't there? Like when you phone up NHS Direct and they're like, can you breathe? Have you got palpitations? Is your eyeball hanging out? You know, when you yeah. phone them up and then they say, okay, you probably don't need to see us for another two months. Thanks, NHS. Um, this is kind of like how all these services work. There's sort of a criteria uh -huh. that needs to be fulfilled and people know what it is and they're giving kids. They were gaming the yeah. system. Gaming the, they really said so more dark. of this later. But why meanwhile, they, why they meanwhile get, Health Secretary uh, West Streeting was on uh, Never Mind the Ballots last night. Uh, he said uh, he's trying to sort of play the Blair, uh, or the centrist role now. You know, we're going <laughs> to tackle middle class lefties. Yeah, he's a middle class lefty, like mm -hmm. all the Labour Party are. Uh, he said uh, he said uh, to Harry Cole, the Sun's political editor, on this program last night, uh, still available on YouTube and uh, on Catch Up. Uh, he said. All trans women, because uh, he, he, he in the past he said trans, trans women, women are, are women. Because that's no, what you no. have to say. He now says, he said, no, I was wrong to say that. He said, all trans women uh, are not, uh, all trans women are, uh, are not women, he said. Oh, uh, okay. So let's have a quick look. They ran a campaign saying trans women, are, trans, trans women are women, get over it. Do you agree with that? Mm, uh, no, it's to the extent that, that, and I say this with some self-criticism and reflection, if you'd asked me a few years ago uh, on this topic, I would have said, trans men are men, trans women are women, some people are trans, get over it, let's move on. This is this is all blown out of proportion. And now I sort of sit and reflect and think, actually, there are lots of complexities Isn't that and challenges. The problem, though, leading debate. figures like yourself, and I'm not just singling you out, but leading figures like yourself were saying, get over it, no, when I, people, I were, trying to, like, when people right. were trying to raise the facts. Do you regret? No, I think you regret? I absolutely take the criticism on the chin. It just it disturbs me that all of these liberal lefties would chant this mantra of this neo-religion of trans is something to be upheld and exonerated and beatified. Better be trans rather than cis. You don't want to be cis, that probably makes you a Nazi. And they all went along with this in the face of science. Then all of a sudden they see the direction of the wind change. A bit of science comes into play with this report and they go, oh, well, I was wrong, wasn't I, Mayor Culper? No, you enabled this. Let's it was all of it. you. It wasn't even the tyranny of silence. It. it was bullying Let's the people on the this. other side. This is the man who wants to be the health secretary. A couple of years he used ago, to work for Stonewall. Uh, uh, he used, wants to be the health secretary. A couple of uh, years ago, he didn't know basic biological facts. Uh, now he's saying all trans women are not women. Oh, no, no, no trans women are women, uh, Wes. No trans women at all are women. Got that? This is Got that? You'll get it. You know, I'll give you something. You've advanced a bit, but you need to get on track. No is... trans women are women. That is a biological truth. Do you know what really offends me about this now? The left have been caught short, haven't they? It's very clear what they were doing. And they said, well, you know, let's all move on. Let's not make it a culture war. If it hadn't been a culture war, as they like to call it, there would have been no cast report. Kids would still be going to old Frankenstein's castle. Men would still be in female changing rooms, taking photographs under the cubicles. The culture war was very important in this instance and all of those people, it wasn't a tyranny of silence, they bullied people who stood up for women and stood up for kids and stood up for science. They bullied us, they tried to censor us, they tried to ostracise us and they are exposed. Good for the culture wars. The culture Good wars the culture are still wars. going on and we're winning. Yes. The woke lefties who think that trans women are women are losing because trans women, once again, Wes, when you're health secretary, try to get this on board. Trans women are not women. Write it down. Move on. Uh, still with trans issues, I guess. Uh, J.K. Rowling, uh, the Harry Potter author, uh, of course, uh, very, very uh, treacherously, uh, the stars of the Harry Potter films, who, oh. in effect, J.K. turned into lifelong millionaires. Daniel mm. Radcliffe, Emma Watson. Uh, she says, and they all said, no, 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 you know, uh, J.K. Rowling is wrong, and, you know, women, are, trans women are women, and she's, she's transphobic. J.K. Rowling now says she will not forgive Daniel Radcliffe Good. and Emma Watson for their stance in yeah. the trans debate. The problem with these people... She gets people, more impressive oh, every, every day. I love, I love J.K. Love Rowling. Her. Don't like Harry Potter much, but I love J.K. Rowling. But what, what is clear about all of this is all of those woke karate... And do you know what? Often it's the middle-class women. I don't like to bash women, but it is the middle-class women. They carry these luxury ideologies around, like Gucci handbags, because, you know, they need to be... They need to show that they're better than the rest of us, us unwashed, ignorant, right-wing types with our horrible, filthy opinions. Aren't we terrible? 
people we need to be looked down on and sneered upon. And so they use this as a way to sort of elevate themselves and show that they're so elite. I'm sorry, you are complicit in promoting uh, the, the abuse of children, essentially. What is wrong with here's you? What, here's what uh, JK Rowling said about uh, Radcliffe and Watson. She said, uh, celebrities who cozied up to a movement intent on eroding women's hard-won right. rights and who use their platforms to cheer on the transitioning of minors can save their apologies mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for traumatised detransitioners and vulnerable women reliant on single-sex spaces. Yeah. So, uh, exactly. hey, Ratcliffe, Watson, right. stick that in your pipe and smoke it, the all right? The madness of crowds. These people just all go along with things to look so important yeah. and fashionable what, and what, superior. What, Should be disgusted at I wonder what yourself. Danny and Emma are thinking about the cast report, you couple of oh, Losers. A uh, couple Weirdos. of losers. Yeah, you yeah, exactly. woke losers. Right, oh, move oh, on. Oh, gosh. Uh, still with trans issues, so many trans do. You'd think there were millions and millions of trans They're everywhere. There. They are. Aren't. I'm secretly trans. There's, no, there's something like 0.004% of the population. Anyway, up in Manchester, they, need a, a monument. they have revealed plans. Uh, they're crowdfunding for a £150,000 national transgender monument to be built in the heart of Manchester's uh, gay area, Canal Street. Uh, this will be uh, to symbolise. It's four, oh, there you go, fantastic, isn't it? Four metal poles, steel poles, to symbolise the strength and spirit of the UK trans community. As oh, soon as they've yeah. got that up, I'm going up to have a look at that. Oh, do you know what? People always do really, nah. people always do really interesting graffiti on Canal Street in Manchester. Yeah, I know, they get, the rid signs, the get rid of the C and yeah, the S. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you can do this, you know, the yeah. spectacle and that, go for it. But um, I mean, what is the point? Everything is transified these days. You can't go for a cup of coffee at Costa without a picture of somebody who's chopped off their boobs. You can't buy some sort of sports kit without the union flag turned into some sort of rainbow horror story. Yeah. Every, zebra crossings are now an eyesore of sort of magic eye levels. It's mad. Just We don't need to keep saying rainbows everywhere and statues everywhere and monuments everywhere. Doesn't this make the world a better place? Actually, it makes people sick and tired of it. Just let people get on with their lives. Stop forcing things down our throats and then the world will be a better place. Fair move on, but I just don't understand why four steel poles? Oh, there'll be some really sort of for the four some different genders there. or something. Uh, it'll probably never happen anyway, but uh, that's what they plan to do. Right, uh, Rishi Sunak, uh, who uh, encouragingly, was it last week, said that... Uh, uh, if the ECHR, the European Court of Human Rights, uh, blocked our Rwanda scheme, he would, he, <laughs> would, he would leave the uh, European <laughs> Convention on oh. Human Rights. Uh, now it turns out that uh, uh, 12 cabinet ministers uh, would revolt, uh, would rebel and try to quash his plans. And they include, of course, super wet Jeremy Hunt, who should really join the mm -hmm. Communist Party, to be honest with you, and the Home Secretary, disappointingly, uh, James Cleverley. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, all the people who suddenly go, we need to leave the ECHR are the people who've had to deal with it, basically. You know, because Robert Jenrick used to be a bit sort of squishy around the edges, and then all of a sudden he was immigration minister. We've got to get out of this madness, because yeah. he suddenly realised that it stops us having sovereignty over our security and our borders and our human rights and everything, frankly. You can't have some sort of you know unelected geezer in Strasbourg sipping his port, making a phone call, saying you can't do government policy. There's too many people in Westminster and the Cabinet just these politicians, too many of them, are obsessed with the rule of law, the international, rule of international law. law. That's what they see their role. We go, we mustn't like, leave the issue of international law. Now, here's the point, here's the point. Right. Stop obsessing on the rule of international law and start thinking about the people that you're supposed to be governing. Right, and also, you know, this, this weird idea that if we suddenly leave the ECHR, we're going to start chopping people's heads off in town squares and sending kids up chimneys. Of course we're not. British human rights are some of the best in the world. We invented this stuff, by the way. But like everything else, when it becomes a supranational organisation. It has to have a reason to exist, so it makes more and more legislation. The latest ridiculous ECHR ruling that these Swiss women have said, oh, if governments oh, don't yes, stick to net zero, then, uh, you know, they can be taken to court or oh, international law because we might die from climate change. It's utterly absurd. This it's, has to stop. We need to be my proposal, I know how to, you know, Westminster gets a lot of flack, quite rightly, full of idiots. Uh, they're making a mess of the country. Uh, here's my plan. Uh, ban law 
lawyers from becoming politicians. So we have no barristers, no KCs, nothing. No, no lawyers in the Cabinet, no lawyers in the House of Commons. It would be much, much better and much less long-winded. The supranational uh, organisation got to go. They, yeah. They've overstretched their yeah, reach. Right, They're let's talk about injurious. foreign aid. Now, this is another oh. extraordinary story. Uh, it turns out, so of, of all our UK foreign aid budget, uh, we're spending a quarter of it. That's an astonishing, a staggering £4.3 billion on uh, domestic asylum seekers and refugees. Uh, so £4.3 billion, that's a quarter of our foreign aid budget, goes on asylum seekers and refugees here in Britain. So mm. uh, basically, a lot of foreign countries lose out because Rishi and the gang are making such a mess of the migrant crisis. 4.3 billion. Imagine what that could do in the NHS, right? Imagine how many new GPs you could have in hospitals, and probably not loads of hospitals. 4.3 billion is going to get you many hospitals. But it shouldn't be going on keeping people who have broken into the country in this country. And Labour, of course, turned around and said, Lisa Nandy, it beggars belief the government are using overseas aids to bail out their failure asylum system and said that we're going to smash the criminal gangs. OK, like there's not Europol and Interpol and, you know, everyone trying to do that anyway, you moron. And said, and we're going to come up with a brilliant returns agreement. Well, do you know what? You're not. Because the EU have suddenly decided... Oh, look, segue straight into the next story. Yeah, go on, carry The on. EU has suddenly decided, by qualified majority voting, QMV, as they like to call it, in the trendy circles of Brussels, which means that if countries go, don't I'll want this, it, no it gets cares. forced on them. <laughs> no, it just means the majority of people... Yeah, but they've decided this. Yeah. They've decided, after it started in 2015, these uh, debates, that all EU countries now have to share migrants. So where they all land in Lampedusa and come to Greece, and those countries are like, we can't cope with this, well, do you know what? You're going to have to take your share... All pay them and there's no way out of this because the EU have now rammed it down people's throats. Now this has interesting repercussions for us because if we were now to have a returns agreement with France the deal would be Labour Party take note we're going to have to take a quotient of the EU migrants yep, so that yep, means yep, the EU right. are just controlling everyone's borders but hilariously, of course, good old Victor Orban if we were in still in, If we were still in the EU, we would be forced to take thousands and thousands yeah. of migrants from Italy, Greece yeah. and all those More than other frontline countries. Here. Let's move on. Joe Biden, uh, last night again on uh, Never Mind the Ballots with Harry Cole, the Sun's political editor. Uh, they had a guest, uh, Elon Levy. He's a former uh, Israel uh, spokesman. And he said, he said uh, that uh, by... Well, basically, he said Biden is throwing Israel under a bus. Let's have a look. Is that how Biden's words have landed? Is that how it feels today, where you are, that you're being thrown under a bus? Increasingly, it seems that there is a crisis in relations between Israel and the United States. But President Biden has said Israel has every right to go after Hamas. He hasn't ruled out an operation in Rafah, he said he wants to see a plan that will enable civilians to be protected. And Israel is working on such a plan to help evacuate civilians, get them out of harm's way temporarily, so that we can destroy the last four Hamas battalions inside Gaza. That yeah, but they weren't, they're not being allowed to do it. No. There's only a 1,000 IDF troops mm. left in Gaza. Uh, several weeks ago, there were hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Uh, basically, Biden, Sunak, putting on, Cameron are putting so much pressure mm. on Israel uh, to stop the alleged genocide that Israel has been uh, has been nullified. But anyway, more to the point. Yeah, Joe, Bi Joe Biden still, you know, like, like seems to uh, give with one hand and take he's away with another. He's been smoked out, hasn't he? He with says, it? He says uh, he's warned uh, Iran, which is closed airspace over Tehran mm -hmm. for uh, military exercises. And uh, people say that they're, th they're gearing up to possibly attack and bomb mm -hmm. Israel. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden has told them, you better not do that. Well, this follows on from a targeted attack against one of the generals of the very uh, controversial Quds Force, the horrible, bloodthirsty uh, elite sector of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps in a Syrian embassy. This guy was taken out, as was his deputy. Israel haven't put their hands up and said it was us. But what happened after that is Iran said, right, that's it, we're going to retaliate. Now, it turns out a plot has been foiled, uh, America says, uh, well, not foiled, but detected, that they actually plan to strike Israel itself with drones, with missiles, a big one, basically. And so it's all sort of panic stations now, because if they strike 
Israel directly. America's already flown their general out this morning to meet with the Israeli general to say, well, we will strike you directly. Now, there's a lot more going on in the subtext here. There's loads of phone calls going on in the Middle East, UAE, Saudi Arabia, all being urged to phone up um, Iran and say, don't do this. This could be nuclear war. But this is, I think, trying to smoke out whether or not Iran has got that nuclear weapon. Have yeah. they got it? How far are they developing it? Nah. Relations were starting they to be normalised then the Biden with Iran after yeah. they tore up the Iran nuclear yeah, right, right, the we'll nuclear deal. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, uh, Biden, Biden says tense. American support for Israel is ironclad, but well, it's it not, be. is it? Well, you, you haven't been very ironclad in the last couple of weeks, Joe. Uh, meanwhile, uh, still with Biden, uh, I think he's been in Australia, hasn't he? Mm. Uh, he uh, says he's considering ending the prosecution of Julian Assange, the WikiLeaks founder, who, of course, has languished without uh, trial or charge in a British prison for, for a long mm -hmm. time because uh, America wants to extradite him. Well, Joe Biden is now saying he might drop the entire case. Uh, let's have a look at Joe saying this. President Biden, do you have a response to Australia's request that you end Julian Assange's prosecution? I didn't hear you. Uh, do you have a response to Australia's request that you end Julian Assange's prosecution? I'm not convinced that wasn't a robot, actually, sort of walking like this stiffly. I think he's now just like, you know, a sort of... Yeah, he's like some mannequin. That like is a computer the most... system. God almighty, it's really terrifying. Uh, uh, but, yeah, I mean, if, if they drop the Assange case, that will be uh, music to many people's ears, particularly his wife here. And it is, you know, uh, I... I'm, I'm sort of not quite sure what I think about no, it. I'm so. me too. I'm ha kind of however, it. however, however, the fact that he is languishing in a British jail now for a couple of years, I think it is, without charge, without trial, uh, you know, we've got to look at that. We're not supposed to do that sort of thing in this country. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know. I did, well, let's Anyway, see uh, Julian Assange uh, says he's a journalist. He's not, but, uh, you know, I, I don't think he should be persecuted because he's just revealing the truth. I'm a journalist. I believe in disclosure. Yeah, he disclosed. I'm a journalist. Things. No, no, I don't care. I'm a journalist. I, I didn't know where you stood on it. I don't you like... your mind quite yeah, quickly. I, I, I love <laughs> Julian Assange. No, I don't. He's a weirdo. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, just quickly before we finish, do you remember that you. disastrous Willy Wonka experience in Scotland, in Glasgow? Just say uh, 2024, Well, uh, they're going to recreate the awfulness of it in Los Angeles, in Hollywood, yeah. and turn it into a kind of uh, counterintuitive visit where people will go and get two jelly beans, which hey. is what you got in and see this kind of rubbish. There you go, Megan. Yeah. There's some sort of Z-list two-bit rubbish acting job for you to do. That will yeah. keep you busy. Yeah, so that is good. So you can go and uh, revisit the magic of the Glasgow <laughs> Willy Wonka experience in Los Angeles. Only in America. Oh, uh, well, well, there you go. Uh, sadly, though, Alex, we've come to the end of this show. Thank you for tuning in. You can relive this experience in longer format. You know what's coming up at 1 p.m. Cross, Cross talk. talk. Up next, up next so. is Julia yeah. Hartley Brewer. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. 
What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would nice 